In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a full viewport snap scroll without any plugins, libraries like full page JS. And I'm going to show you how do you click on each section and go to the next one. And we're going to do this in React because this is actually not so simple. Being able to go from inside the component to tell the main page to scroll to different sections in animation is actually was a little confusing. So I want to show you how to do this because if you do the snap scroll, people need to be able to do that. I'm also going to show you how to do some of this little animation that I did with GSAP. I'm going to save that to the end as a bonus. And then one caveat before we start, if you ever implement this, overflow can be a problem. So you got to make sure that everything is going to live inside this full page. If someone squeezes the browser, you know, and they're looking at things, you know, pretty small and you have too much content, then things are going to go off screen, but it'll take the place of this full page, you know, JS, which is another plugin that costs money and it kind of does thing. And it's just, when you use these plugins, a lot of times you get stuck with, you know, how things are done. And a lot of times you need to stick with your code. You need vanilla. You, what do you guys think of this shirt? I did this myself. It's a little code and put it on a, on a shirt and printed it so I can have something. I feel like there's not a lot of, you know, coding merch. So I just wanted to have something to wear. So just, I'm curious, do you guys like this or not? I mean, I feel like I should have added more code to the bottom, but I don't know. I was like a little lazy. So I was like, I'm not going to write all this code just for this shirt. If you guys like Next.js, React, CSS, animations, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. You always got to start my tutorials with the sparkling water. I can't show you the brand, but oh, can you see the brand? Let me hide the brand. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a boilerplate uh, next app, which is going to be React, of course. It's MPX create next app at latest to have. I'm going to clean this up so that I can get rid of. So I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff here. I'm actually gonna leave this styles container because I'm probably going to be using that. And now let's get started. Now, one thing I do need here, this is gonna be for a later thing, which is going to be um, the GSAP thing, which that's a bonus until later. But the first thing we're going to do is just get started with the HTML and CSS. So I'm going to add this. I do have a nice tutorial on how to use CSS modules, which I always use. So I'm gonna use this as a CSS module, but I also need this to be accessible globally. So I'm gonna create another one. The first thing we're going to do is we need to start creating the first section that's gonna go full screen. As you saw it here, it's gonna be pretty much this full viewport. So let's go ahead and let's first create our component, which I'm gonna create all this in separate components because to show you um, how to make it really smooth. So let's get started with a new folder called components. And we're going to do new file, my section .js, and then a new file. I'm also um, going to use a module file .scss. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to use SAS. So let me actually do that real quick. I always use that. So let's install the right packages. I'm going to install npm i SAS. Um, and you don't necessarily need that, but I'm going to demo that. And I'm also going to install npm i gsap, which is going to be for the animations towards the end. And now let me rewrite the CSS to say um, over here, I think I need to rewrite the one that came with next, which is this one. I'm also going to add a reset um, CSS. Now let's get started. Now let's go back into our my section component. First thing I typically do is just start adding the function, the default function, export default function, my section return importing um, use effect as well as use ref, the image component. I'm going to import that CSS module file um, that I just created that doesn't have anything in it yet, but it's there. It's important. So what I do here is typically just start building the HTML first. So we're just going to have first a master section. Then we're going to have some copy um, right here. So let me save that here section copy, where it's going to have hold the H2 tag for the headline. Um, and then let me get rid of that. So this is going to say lorem ipsum for now. Jeez, these mechanical keyboards, I love them, but I, the one I have right now is I think it's the red switch and it's so light. So I end up, um, you know, mistyping. So also let me get my images here. So I'm going to paste it right into public. These images, these are the three images in the down arrow that I have. So we'll just use the first one right here. I'm going to hard code it first, and then I'll show you how to create the props for it. All right. So all that's there. And then we're also going to have the button at the bottom, which is going to be button. And I don't need the function just yet. So just give it a class name styles dot down arrow button. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import this component just to make sure I have it there. 
import my oh my section right and now we'll paste this in as the first one right here okay now there might be some errors right because we don't have any css we just have all this so you can see the pure html and that's how i like to start now let's go into our my section module file and let's start creating the section right so we have this module right here css module called dot section is the class so what we're going to do is just start doing that so this is going to be 100 vh you know 100 full viewport height obviously right because that's what we talked about earlier we're going to do display flex because i'm going to center all the stuff inside then we want to put the copy <clears throat> right here and then we're going to do the down arrow right here and basically that's going to be positioned absolute with the background image as i have this down arrow svg with 40 percent so that's going to be using a background image so that's there so now i have this one section now the one thing we didn't do is all these sections need to be in a parent container when it comes to this full thing so before i continue on with this uh we got to create the parent container which is called container so let's go back to the index page and we're using it from home.module.scss. So over here, we want to get rid of all of, I left Next.js's content here. So we definitely want to get rid of all that. What we're going to do is I have this here, which is basically this, this container right here, which is the parent to everything. And this is where all the sections go. You have the container and common stuff is just basically full viewport with 100 percent 100 vh and then these three are the important ones for the snap scroll i will get back to this in a second so you have these three properties for the containing and making sure that the stuff inside snaps you let me just go back into index and let's just duplicate this my section whoops <laughs> and let's do this three times and let's refresh so if you see here, it's still just scrolling. That is because we have one more property to add inside of my section, which is basically the scroll snap align. So this is the only property inside of each section that's needed to tell it to snap. So you have the container and then you have the thing inside which tells it to snap. I'll refresh. Let's go back up. And I'm just, I'm literally, I'm not, I'm just scrolling like a little slide and it's going on its own. It doesn't look like it because there's different photos. So we're gonna do that in a second. When there's a full screen, people sometimes don't like to see the scroll bar. Now you could keep it there for accessibility, but if you wanna get rid of it, um, you could go back into the container, not on the body tag. You wanna go back to the container that you've created manually that's holding all these sections. And what you could do is, these are the properties that'll do that. I, I hid those for now and that's just, um, and now you see the scroll bar gone and now I'm scrolling and it's kind of just full page snapping into each section. Now let's start creating the props so we can have each component have its own content. So now let's go back into our index page and let's give all of these sections their own properties. The image prop and then a headline prop because that's gonna get passed in. So let's save that. And then I'm also gonna do it for each section here. And these are, again, just props passing along. So now I'm sending each component its props right in here. We're going to take the image and headline that we sent over. And now instead of the lorem ipsum, we're going to say, use the headline that I sent over. And you saw that instantly change. And now we're going to say, use the image variable that came in, the image prop. And now it's going to use what came through as the image there it goes so you can see them there so right away everything is clean now you can see the snap scroll pretty clear because you can see different content now these down arrows don't work i'll show you how to do that and we don't have the animation yet being able to go from inside the component to tell the main page to scroll to different sections in animation is actually was a little confusing so i want to show you how to do this because if you do the snap scroll people need to be able to do that so let's do that now let's make sure we have the user f the first thing we need to do is we're going to be using a function called scroll into view so when you do scroll into view um, that's when you need um, a, con a each section needs to be wrapped in a container that has a ref so you can reference it that's the only way you can do scroll into view so first thing let's actually just create refs so we have section one section two section three and now we're going to create containers around these components so say hey these are you know they're wrapped in these refs now we have these refs right here great we need to create a function so that when it's clicked it says hey you need to scroll into view go to this ref so we have a function and i just wrote this you know from scratch it's just function scroll to calls whatever you want section is going to be the name of the ref that you want to pass because we're going to do this inside the component so we're going to say section.current scroll into view with the browsers 
default behavior and it's going to animate. We need to pass the function as a callback and we need to pass the ref that we want that arrow to go to. So the first thing we're going to do is pass that function in each of these props. So scroll to, scroll to, name the prop whatever you want, but that's what I use. I usually keep it the same. Well, when an arrow is clicked, how does it know what to go to? We need to send the section we want it to go to. So imagine we're in the first section, we want people to go to the next one. So we're going to write a little prop that says, hey, go to section ref. We want to tell it, it should be section two. And then in this one, we wanted to say the prop should be section three. So that when it's clicked on it, go. Now we didn't write all this yet. We're just sending the references. We're just sending the information. The third one, we don't really need actually anything there. We actually don't even need to pass um, the prop to that one. So now when we go inside of our component, we want to pull um, those two props. So we have scroll to and the go to section. So on the button click, what we want to happen is for the scroll to to execute. And then we want to say, hey, go back up and say, go to the section ref that is passed. Let's go in. So if we click here, you see it working. Great. So now it's working. Now, the third one doesn't work because we still have the arrow, but nothing needs to happen there. So what we want to do is hide the arrow on the third section. So in order to do that, we want to have another prop called show arrow just to send some kind of variable. So we're going to say show arrow equals true, show arrow equals true. The third one, show arrow equals false. We just don't, we want to tell it, don't show the arrow. So if we go back to the section, what we want to do is wrap this button in a ternary condition to tell it, hey, only show this if the show arrow is true. So first let's down here, let's send over the show arrow. And now let's write a ternary function right here, which is going to be um, show arrow and show arrow. And then this is just shorthand. I'm going to place it in here because if show arrow is true, then just do this. Otherwise, you know, nothing It works. And now the third arrow, there's nothing there. And I go back up and I'm good. That's the end of this section. Now for this final bonus, I want to show you how to add some animation using GSAP. Now GSAP is a free animation library. People use frame of motion, which is does the same. I like to use GSAP first because I'm used to it. Um, but let me show you just what to do. So I've already installed GSAP. Now we're going to do the final thing here. Now in order to use GSAP, you need to create a ref for the things you're going to animate and for the things that you're going to trigger. So what we want to do is we want to animate the headline. So I need to create a ref for the headline. So I'm inside this section and I'm going to say for the headline, there we go. So now we have the ref and that's all we needed. Now we're going to write this use effect. Now we do need a use effect because all of GSAP and most animation needs to happen on mount of the use effect. So we're going to create um, a use effect right here. Now here's where our GSAP is going to go. And it's pretty simple. Our GSAP is the function is basically GSAP dot from and this is basically the method that we're using um, that is going to do it. And we're going to say we want it to do the headline. That's the thing that we want to do. And then we want to pass an object of properties that say this is the animation from and then it should go here. So we want to use auto alpha. They also have opacity. And here's where you can add most of the CSS properties, but they have some of their own. So and then we're going to also animate the Y axis as well. And then we'll create another object here. So from to. So now here's the object that says what should happen when it goes to. So it's going to be auto alpha duration one close this out all right so now we have um whoops oh i didn't import the gsap wow added the package but we need to import it into the function so it's going to be import gsap this is just the syntax right here import the gsap also import scroll trigger which is going to handle the animation on scroll and then you have to register the plugin now that should work on animating right here um, now I'll show you why the others aren't working. And so there we have it. Now we need to add the scroll trigger, another object here called scroll trigger. I'm going to hide this for now. And we're going to say trigger, use the headline as the trigger. Once that comes in, these are the start end variables that tells it when to start. These are some toggle actions. I'm not going to get into this too deep into GSAP. So now if you scroll down, 
you don't see it happening here. And the reason is because scroll trigger is using the body to know where to scroll. But what we remember, we have a parent container that is really controlling all these sections. So cool. the cool thing is most animation libraries will have this kind of function, but GSAP has a thing that tells it, you have to tell it, hey, use the parent container as the scroller. And that's what we have here. And that's the reason why in the main page, we created another, um, a way to reference it because I just need to reference it for the GSAP. Otherwise, I wouldn't have needed this. this. The CSS module is fine. So let's go back in and say, hey, use the scroller as a container. Now, if we refresh, if we scroll down, we see this animation. Now, also, I think what's happening is the Y axis is supposed to be animating, but I didn't tell it what to do here. So Y should go to zero, right? So it should be negative 40 and then zero, right? So it's from two. And then this is just saying do the scroll trigger. So let's go back up and refresh. And you see it happening, scroll down, happening, scroll down, happening. When you go back up, happens again. When you go back up, happens again. Now, 40 might be a little too much, but I just made it 20. And then it's nice and smooth. So that's it. And now it's also going to happen on click. Let's go back up and let's do click, click. Great. Now we have a full page. This is complete. This is pretty cool, guys. Tell me what you guys think. I hope you guys like this. React, Next.js, CSS, animations. Hit that like button and subscribe.